Hey everyone, Dr. Chris here, and in today's video, I am going to be talking about some tips and tricks for your setup within ArcGIS Pro. These tips and tricks are right at the beginning, they're right at the start, and they are about naming your folders within your project. Here we go. All right, here I am back in my basement office because once again, I am a free agent in GIS, in geoscience, in video production, in graphic design, all that cool stuff. Today's video is again on folder structure within your ArcGIS Pro project. That's because I think it's great to make sure that you have a solid base for your projects going forward. So here we go. Yes, I am using a software package that I love and that I know that some of you love and that some of you hate, and that is ArcGIS Pro in this case for personal use. Disclaimer is no, Esri is not paying me for this, though they can if they like. I'm just a bit of a fanboy and I think it's a great piece of software. This video is part of a series I like to call Build a Bulletproof GIS. I'm actually writing a book for that, so hopefully you'll see that soon. And this video is specifically about folder naming. Folder naming before you start your project. Why is folder naming so important? Folder tells you what's inside the folders, especially with GIS. Because we deal with so much data in GIS, we have to be very specific with our folder names. We also have to consider maximum compatibility with our geo database, especially since I'll be talking about ArcGIS Pro. For me, I like my folder structure, especially with respect to the shape files, HTMLs, sometimes tables, copies of my feature data sets in my geo database. Now, I'll talk about this in a few more slides of why that's important why it's important for repeatability and compatibility. If you're just starting out and you're new to GIS, you're not quite considering maximum compatibility down the road, especially when it comes to your folder structures. So if you want maximum compatibility, you'll have to think ahead and think about all the code that you're gonna be making. How your folder structure is going to be understood by future creators when looking at your GIS project. And also, how the folder structure works with your geo database. Taking a few steps ahead, you can actually have some really cool compatibility and future proof your folder structure and geo database. Now to bring it down more on a base level, we're gonna look at what does compatibility mean with your with respect to folder structure and geo databases and coding and other people who are gonna be using your project. Well, that means do not use special characters. Now, these special characters depend a lot on your operating system, how your drives are formatted, but later coding can get kind of crunched up when dealing with special characters. Now, of course, you can code around special characters, but I would suggest for maximum understandability, leave those special characters behind. There's one sort of special character that you can use, and I'm going to suggest you use it all the time, and that is underscores. Underscores are good. Spaces are bad. The spaces in your folder can cause a bit of problems. I don't know if you've ever sent an internal email to a colleague or something. You try to copy the folder destination and there's space in it. You paste it into the email, press enter. At the first space, it forgets everything after that. Bit of a pain, isn't it? Also, geodatabases do not allow for spaces within their naming of feature data sets or features or tables or rasters. Probably everything. Do not use spaces in your folder structure. Don't use numbers either at the beginning of your folder structure. That's because within your geo database, you can't use numbers at the beginning of features, feature data sets, rasters, or tables. I'll remember to put that one in the PDF that I'm going to make uh, that you click on down below. Now, another compatibility is for future use of your geo database. And by all means, use technical language when you're making folders within your GIS project. And that's because the people who are going to actually be able to look at your project are most likely going to also speak your language, which is GIS. And something you should consider doing that I do in all my projects with respect to my folders, especially for my shapefiles and KMLs and my featured data sets within my database. In a lot of my projects, I've got maybe a hundred features that I've harvested from various sources. All those features I have separated into feature data sets with names like infrastructure, land use, permits. Now, the reason why I do this is 
because I have a folder structure for those shapefiles, for those tables who have the exact same name. I have a copy of all my data outside of my geodatabase. And with a little bit of coding and a little bit of looking ahead, I can have the data go back and forth. Now this allows for backups. This allows for people using other GIS systems to tap into my data. It makes it quite portable if I have to move just the shapefiles somewhere else. What also is cool is that if you do the same thing for every single one of your projects, you'll have a bunch of projects that all look identical, save for the name of the projects. What that means is you can swap things out fairly easily. Your code can update everything fairly easily. You've got maximum compatibility. Now that was just the folder structure for really just talking about the shape files outside of your geodatabase. You can go in a lot more detail about imagery, rasters, different analysis that you've done. And I'd like to hear about your folder structure naming. Just leave it down below. We'll get a conversation going. Before I go, I got to mention that I've got a Teespring store down below. I've got some cool designs that I'd uh, like you to check out. I also got a new website up and running, sort of, called Geographic Information Success. I'm writing a couple books. Hopefully those will be available soon for you to buy. All about GIS mindsets and how you can make yourself 10 times more effective in GIS. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, add me to your LinkedIn, or even better, share my videos through your networks. Till next time, I'm Dr. Chris. Keep rocking.